It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 230. Hello, I'm Dr. Neil, and welcome to another Friday edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet, nutrition, stress management, anything along those lines. If you wanna send me a question, basically it's like getting a consultation for free, it's really easy to do. Just come by oldpodcast.com and look for the bar along the side of the page that says, ask a health question. If you click on that, you can record a message straight from your computer's microphone or from a phone if you use the app. What's great is you can do multiple takes and once you're happy with it, you submit it to us. It's that easy. Or if you like to do things the old fashioned way, you can call 61 I love OHD. So call in or visit oldpodcast.com, send in your question, and you'll be in small special raffles to win books from us. In fact, we just gave away another one yesterday. And don't forget, if you've already submitted a question to me, I will get around to answering it, I promise. In fact, today's question was from sometime last year, so I apologize for being late, but let's jump right in, hear today's question as we optimize your life. Hi, Dr. Neil. This is Michelle from Wyoming. I'm turning 30 on Sunday. Yikes. I'm currently very fit and healthy, but as I hit this milestone in age, I'm nervous about my health, weight, appearance, etc. in the future decades. As a doctor, what advice do you have for someone that is turning 30? Thanks a lot. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for your question. I am wishing you a very belated happy birthday. Now, as someone who turned 30, oh, let's see, a while ago, I'll just say that, I can definitely relate to this milestone birthday. I must say, this is not a question I get very often, in fact, and it's unfortunate. The fact that you are thinking about your future health now is pretty amazing. You are definitely in the minority. In my experience, most start to think about this when it's too late, meaning they've been diagnosed with a chronic disease. Heck, that was me. So what steps can you take right now to help you feel your best as you prepare to cross more birthday milestones? Well, here we go. One, continue to stay active. Michelle, you mentioned that you feel you are relatively fit right now, and that's great. But what many people discover is that it becomes more difficult to stay this active as we get older. There are a number of reasons for this. Work and family life start to become more of a priority. Your schedule starts to fill up. And honestly, it's literally more difficult. Once we hit our late 20s and early 30s, our muscles actually start to shrink. The fancy way of saying this is our muscles atrophy. This process is very natural, but if we stay active, we can delay this process. The best way to do this is to be sure you're incorporating some form of resistance training into your routine. So not just cardio, but try and lift a weight or two once in a while. And believe it or not, yoga and Pilates count too. This is because you're using your body weight to incorporate resistance. So that works just as well. All right, that's tip number one. Tip number two, manage your weight. Another nasty side effect of aging is weight gain. Yes, our metabolism does slow as we age. This is mostly because our resting metabolic rate, which is basically the amount of calories we burn at rest each day, starts to slow down. In part, this is due to our muscles shrinking, like I mentioned before. So we end up burning fewer calories each day. But here's the thing. At the same time, while we're not burning as many calories each day, we continue to eat the same amount of calories or more, and we're less active. This is a perfect recipe for weight gain. We're learning that as our body weight climbs, our risk for disease does too. So basically, carrying too much body weight leads to increased stress on the body. And this is called systemic inflammation. Systemic inflammation is like your body being stressed all the time. When your body's always stressed, increased disease risk is the nasty side effect. Illnesses like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, stroke, arthritis, sleep apnea, and even some forms of cancer are more common in those that are overweight or obese. But the good news is you can control your metabolism to some extent by trying to burn more calories simply by staying active. See tip number one. On to tip number three, stay social. I mentioned this last week too. Human beings need other humans around. That's just how we're built. We tend to be healthier when we have friends and family around. Okay, let me clarify. Friends and family that we actually like to be around. 
being able to have the unconditional love and support from others makes us happier and healthier. When we look at studies on aging, we find that social support is so important. And again, having 845 Facebook friends doesn't appear to matter as much. And in fact, staying social has been found to even prevent Alzheimer's disease, which is a severe form of dementia. Tip number four, eat your omega-3s. Omega-3s, if you recall, are a type of fatty acid. Remember, we need fat in our diets. And this is one many of us here in the US need to consume more often. Remember how I mentioned systemic inflammation, basically our bodies being under stress? Well, omega-3 fats help prevent this inflammation. Think of it this way. Systemic inflammation is like a raging fire. Omega-3 fats are the fire extinguishers. So where do we find these fats in our diet? Use this acronym to remember it. SMASHED. That's S-M-A-S-H-T. The first S in SMASHED stands for salmon. M, mackerel. A, anchovies. S, sardines. H, halibut and herring. And T, trout. So these sources are rich in omega-3 fatty acids. If you don't like fish, yes, algae would also work. You may have heard that flax seeds, walnuts, and soybeans also contain omega-3 fats. You'd be right. But what we're learning is these plant-based versions of omega-3s actually contain a different form of omega-3 when we compare that to those found in fish and algae. Basically, they're not as potent as the omega-3s I just mentioned. So if you can, eat about three ounces of cold water fatty fish, like those I mentioned in the acronym, two to three times per week, and that'll likely give you enough omega-3s. If you want a supplement, that's fine too. Just be sure you do not buy the mega-dose versions of those omega-3s. And as always, check for quality and purity by simply looking on the label. Check for an NSF symbol or a USP symbol. And tip five, stay busy, but manage your stress. As you get older, it seems like life responsibilities increase exponentially. You may feel like you never get a moment to catch your breath. Having four jobs myself, I can relate. But I promise you, it will be okay. It will all get done. You'll find a way. But the key is to not stress out during those moments in between. Those moments when it feels like there's no way all of this can get done. Easier said than done, right? Well, pun intended. You remember how I mentioned that every cell in the body responds to exercise in a positive way? I mentioned this a while back in one of my podcasts. Well, stress seems to do the opposite. Oh, it affects every cell in the body, all right, but in a negative way. This is why stress management is so important. Besides increasing one's risk for heart disease and stroke, we're learning that stress can increase our risk for all sorts of other diseases too. Yes, even cancer. So what to do? Here's the trick. Think of stress management like you would any other important event or meeting during your day. For me, I actually schedule a trip to the gym. I'm not kidding. I block out an hour of my schedule on those days I want to get in that oh-so-important workout. That's worked really well for me. So now, I block out time for some peace and quiet. It's my time for a mind dump, or to do some yoga, or some stretching, or some deep breathing, or some reading, or some guitar playing, whatever. Some activity that makes me happy and makes me feel more energized and less stressed afterwards. Chances are, if you're anything like me, if it's not scheduled, you won't do it. Schedule it. Think of that time as sacred and you'll be feeling your best in no time. Now, there are lots of other tips that I could share with you, but based on all the data I've seen, these five appear to be the most important. Thank you again for the question, Michelle, and a very happy belated birthday. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book from us. And one last time really quickly, You can be entered into the small raffles and possibly have your question answered right here on the show. Just come by oldpodcast.com to submit your question or call 61 I love ohd It's that easy. As I wrap up this week, I wanna thank you again so much for listening. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. 
If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.